ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويوفي لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله رب العالمين All praises due to Allah the Lord of all the worlds All praises due to Allah who has blessed us with this great great religion. As we've mentioned previously, the saying of Imam Ali radiallahu an Inna minna inna minna imid dunya in yakfiya kal Islam niamatan from the blessings of this world is that Islam suffices as a blessing. Alhamdulillah during these this month of Rabiul Awal the Muslims are reflecting, commemorating renewing their attachment to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the embodiment of human virtue Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And for that we love him. The per people love and they're attracted to that which reflects perfection. And in human terms, our Prophet ﷺ is that embodiment. However, we understand that the Prophet ﷺ is the gate to the epitome of perfection and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the epitome of knowledge the epitome of beauty in Allah jameel yuhibbu al-jamal the epitome of mercy and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reflected that just a brief example of how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reflected the perfection of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions, or the Prophet rather informs us concerning Allah Ta'ala, that Allah Ta'ala has divided His mercy into 100 portions. One portion of that mercy, He distributes through all of the creation, from the be its beginning to its end, the mercy of the mother for her child, the mercy of the strong towards the weak, that we see 
every day embodied all around us. And certainly there are strong who exploit the weak. But we see manifestations of mercy in this world in incredible and amazing ways. But all of that mercy from the beginning of the creation to the end of the creation is just one portion of Allah Ta'ala's mercy. The other 99 portions Allah Ta'ala has held back for to be reserved, to be dispensed amongst us when our account is taken. Yawm al -qiyam. In other words, Allah Ta'ala has held back most of His mercy for the next life. So that that mercy can envelop us and can shower us and can be an aid for us to enter into paradise. 99 out of 100 parts. The Prophet wasallam reflects that concern for us. Every Prophet السلام, the peace and blessings of Allah upon them were given a prayer. All of them used their prayer in this world. The Prophet وسلم, despite the suffering he saw amongst his companions, despite the suffering he knew would befall the Ummah after his parting, وسلم, in spite of that he held back his prayer for the Day of Judgment so that he could pray for our salvation Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This shows how the compassion and mercy that Allah Ta'ala has for us. وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ rahima, And Allah is merciful to the believers. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a perfect human reflection of that. And he's also described, بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفَ rahim. He's mercy, compassionate and merciful to the believers. So if we understand that, and if we understand the other great virtues of the Prophet wasallam, we love him. And if we love him, we follow him. Because love, a function of love is obedience. A function of love is longing and desire. So mahabba cannot be separated from irada. And mahabba can't be separated from ta'a. These, these, these concepts, they're linked. So if we love the Prophet, we follow him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in following him, we are demonstrating our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah ta'ala, He links love and He links obedience. When He says in the Qur'an, Qul, Say to them, O Muhammad, Qul, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni yuhibbukum Allahu yawfirukum dhunubakum, wallahu ghafur rahim. So He links three things, love, in two manifestations and obedience. So he links the love, his love, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah. This is linked to the following or obedience to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fattabi'uni. Say to them, if indeed you love Allah, then follow me. And then that following of the Prophet وسلم, is linked to something greater. So our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads to something greater. Our following the Prophet وسلم. Why do we say something greater? Because this is a proof of our love for Allah. So the proof is greater than the claim. We can say, I love Allah. Just like some of us say to our wives or our husbands, Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. What's the proof? You love her, but you treat her in, in, in despicable ways. 
You love him, but you never cook for him. You love him, but the house is dirty when he comes home. That's called a da'wah. Not da'wah. Ta'marbutu with alif. Alif maqsura. Da'wah. Which is just a claim. It has no real validity. And it is usually used in a negative sense. It's a claim that's not accompanied with action. It's just empty words. I love you. I love you. So Allah Ta'ala, He demands proof. <laughs> and this was said to a group of hypocrites and a group of, of, of those who disbelieved. Qab bin al Ashraf, the followers of Qab bin al Ashraf. They said, as Allah recorded in the Quran, Nahnu awliya Allah, awliya We are the the beloved of Allah and those, we are the friends of Allah. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُ اللَّهِ وَأَحِبَّاءُ And we are those who love Allah. And so the Prophet ﷺ was instructed to tell them, if, you, if this is truthful, then follow me. Otherwise, it's an empty claim. And so we should ask ourselves, are we true in our claim of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the answer is easy. Are we following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Ask yourself, do you want to smell like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Or do you want to smell like something produced by Brut or Revlon or Max Factor or who knows what? Do you want to dress like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And not necessarily in the style that was prevalent amongst the Arabs, the Izara and the Rida, the, the upper and lower cloths that they covered their nakedness with. But the standards introduced by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, loose clothing, Beautifying clothing, form-fitting clothing, dignified clothing. Or do you want to dress based on the standards set by Hollywood? And we know who controls Hollywood. Undignified clothing, clothing that reveals the aura of people, clothing that, that imitates poverty, but you have to be rich to buy it. Like ripped up blue jeans. And it's not sufficient. This is how shaitan and his awliyat, they exploit and make fools of us. It's not sufficient to wear your own blue jeans until they wear out. And then you have a pair of ripped up blue jeans. You have to pay $150 or $200 to buy some fake ripped up blue jeans. It's the epitome of insanity. But is that your, is that your model? Is the, the tight-fitting, skinny jeans? Is that your model? If it is, ask yourself. Ask yourself. Where is your love for Muhammad? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say to them, إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي If indeed you love Allah, then follow me. Follow me. And so the, the following of the Prophet ﷺ is higher than the claim of love. And the, the reward for following the Prophet ﷺ is higher than following the Prophet ﷺ. And that's the love of Allah for you, for us. قُلِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And so that leads to the love of Allah for us and the forgiveness of our sins. And these are two separate things. So we all know a young man, young lady, whom we, we were, had puppy love. So we loved somebody for the first time. 
We knew our love was worthless and our love could even be a source of torment if they didn't love us. We're tormented. I love her so much for right now. You'll outgrow it in six months. But right now I love her so much, but I'm tormented. That love isn't a source of elevation. It's not a source of, of bliss. It's not a source of felicity. It's a source of torment because she doesn't love me. She won't write back when I send her these notes. She won't even look at me when I pass her in the hallway. So what, what is the value of love if it's not reciprocated? But if she loved you, oh boy, subhanAllah, you're on cloud nine. If Allah loves us, we're beyond the clouds. There's no number of the clouds. You're, you're beyond the clouds. Allah. And then what does Allah do? A lot of people, they don't notice this. Allah then loves you and forgives your sins. And what is, what, is the, what is the virtue of that? Besides the obvious, the obvious, we won't have to carry these sins when we're judged. But the sin, when we sin, it stains our heart. And when it stains our hearts, our hearts are darkened over. And when our hearts are darkened over, we can't perceive Allah in the purity of His splendor. So when Allah forgives our sins, then uh, the stain is removed from our heart. And then our hearts are sensitive and receptive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can behold Allah. The, the basira of our hearts is pure. And then the purity of Allah's love can penetrate to our hearts because they're not darkened by the stain of sin. And then our love is elevated that much, that much higher. Our love is that much pure. Our love is that much powerful in terms of its impact on our heart, on our soul, on our very being. يَغْفِرُكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ رَحِيمٌ And Allah is forgiving and merciful. لا إله الله. So, our following our messenger, and our messenger opening up the gateway for us to Allah. صلى الله عليه وسلم this is the value of the motive. We say, what do we say? Ya Imam Rusni, Ya Sanadi, Anta Babullahi Mu'atamadi. You are the gate leading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the gate leading to Allah. Is the gate leading to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the opportunities that Allah gives us. And they're multiplied and amplified in this season. So brothers and sisters, don't let this season pass without reflecting on the value and the virtue of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't let this season pass without reflecting on the implications of the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala loves us. We mentioned love and irada. These are inseparable, mahabba wa wal irada. When Allah Ta'ala loves us, yuhibbukum Allah, Allah wants good for us. Yuridu bina khayr wal khayrat. Allah wants good for us. Allah wants success for us. Allah wants to open the words tawfiq for us. This is the implication of Allah Ta'ala's love for us. And if Allah wants good for us, there's no one who can deny it. Allah wants guidance for us. This is an implication of His love. There's no one who can lead us astray. When Allah is led astray, there's no one to guide. And whomever Allah has guided, there is no one. Whoever who and whoever Allah guides, there is no one to lead astray. We need the guidance of Allah. We live in a time 
where the forces attempting to lead us astray are probably stronger than they've ever been in the history of humanity. Those forces of materialism are stronger than they've ever been. The forces of consumerism are stronger than they've ever been. And we mentioned an example of that. I don't think you can find in human history a time where people would spend money to buy fake ripped up clothes. They just wear their own ripped up clothes. Before the Industrial Revolution, most people had one or two garments. The Industrial Revolution made all of this possible. They ripped up, they just wear it, put a patch on it. Now we pay money for ripped up clothing. We pay money for clothing with patches on it. And our own ripped up clothing will, will throw away, will discard. And we won't even put a patch on the ripped up clothing. We'll go buy a blazer with patches on the elbows when our own elbows that we've worn out over the last five, six, ten years, we won't even put a patch on it and wear that. We'll throw it in the garbage and go to the store to buy a brand new blazer with patches on the elbows for fashion. I don't think you can find a time in human history when people behave like this. The forces of shaitan are stronger than they've ever been. The forces of sexual promiscuity, both heterosexual and homosexual, are stronger than they've ever been. There was a time when only prostitutes dressed like prostitutes. Now it's fashionable for most women to dress like prostitutes. Advertising their bodies. Has this been, have we had a time like this in human history? And you combine all of this, at the same time, the assault of shaitan, the, the four great enemies of the, of, of the human have been unleashed, at dunya wal hawa, wal nafs wal shaitan. The nafs, al shahwani, al bahimi, is appealed to like it's never been appealed to. The hawa, just follow whatever is suggested to you. You go to Las Vegas or Las Vegas, a big sign awaits you. Surrender to your desires. Just follow your hawa. If it says just spend all your money gambling, forget about your bills. Forget about your children's tuition. Just follow, surrender to your desires. The dunya and the materialism, shaitan, the nafs, the hawam, they're all calling the person astray. And in a time like this, we need to buttress and strengthen ourselves to hold on to our religion. And to do that, we have to Follow the way of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is our fortress against these, for these forces that have been unleashed against us. He is, the, the, he is the, the, the protection and the barrier, the shield rather, to ward them off. He is the way to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, which is the ultimate source of protection. We need our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like we've never needed him. We need the protection of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like we've never needed it. We need to follow and adhere to and cling doggedly to the way of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as he instructed us. Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al-khulafa rahshideen al-hatiyeen addu alayha bin nawajid. It's incumbent upon you to follow my way in the way of my rightly guided predecessors or successors. Bite into them with your hind teeth. Abdu alayha bin nawajif. Cling doggedly to them. Hold on to them with all of your might. Bite into them. Don't let anyone rip it away from you. May Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah elevate us. 
May Allah bless us to realize the value and the virtue of this Prophet he sent to us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the, the gate to Allah. He is the key to Allah Ta'ala's love. He is the, 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 the passport we need to enter, in, enter into the fortress that Allah Ta'ala provides for us. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfir mahdi wa lakum wa li sa'iri mu'mineen. Ya qawm astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidi al-Mursaleen Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira inna Allah wa malaikatahu yus'alun ala al-Nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الحمد لله So we mentioned in the first part of this khutbah the love of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the love of Allah سبحانه وتعالى but our love as a believer is completed by a third love so we, we love Allah والذين آمنوا وشدوا حب لله and we love the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam لَا يُؤْمِنُ أَحَدُكُمْ حَتَّى أَكُونَ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ وَلَدِهِ وَمِنْ وَالِدِهِ وَوَلَدِهِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ No one of you truly believes until I'm more beloved to him than his, his father, his son and all of humanity and the, the, the magnitude of this love these two loves are emphasized or illustrated when the desert Arab came to the Prophet صلاة وصيام ولا صيام إلا إني أحب الله ورسوله قال صلى الله عليه وسلم المرء مع من أحببت وأنت مع من أحببت والمرء مع من أحب so the desert Arab came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said to to him where when is the hour when is doomsday and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he wisely answered what have you done to prepare for it it doesn't matter when the time is, it, what matters is that you're ready whenever it comes. And he said, I haven't prepared a, a, an abundance of prayer and fasting, but I do love Allah and His Messenger. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a person will be with the one he loves. You will be with the one you love. So this illustrates to us the, the, the weightiness of the love of Allah and His Messenger, but there's a third love that all of us should concern ourselves with. Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, and again, to, to emphasize the weightiness of what He says, He introduces it by instructing His Prophet Sallallahu to inform us of this. قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ Say to them, O Muhammad, if indeed you love Allah. And another verse where the love of Allah is mentioned, Allah Ta'ala mentions, قُلْ إن كان آباؤكم وأبناؤكم وإخوانكم وأزواجكم وعشيراتكم وأموال اقترفتموها وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيلي فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين Say to them O Muhammad if it be that your parents, he mentioned the fathers specifically, or your children, he mentioned the sons specifically, or your, or your siblings, he mentioned the brothers specifically, or your 
spouses, he mentioned the wives specifically, all your kinfolk, the business, the wealth, for the glory of Allah and the glory of the Messenger of Allah. And we don't want anything from the people. For the glory of Allah. We don't want any thanks or appreciation. We're doing it for Allah. But we have to strive. Fi sabili Allah. Wa jihad in fi sabili. Wa jihad in fi sabili. So just as we ask ourselves, is our love true? Let us ask ourselves, am I using this life, the skills, the talent, the ability, the time that Allah Ta'ala has given me to do something positive for Islam? And if we find the answer is not what it should be, we should do everything in our power to rectify it so that we can meet Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala and the fullness of His love is radiating from us. The love of Allah and the love of the Messenger of Allah and the love of striving in His cause. Allahumma gfir lil muslimin wal muslimat wal mu'minin wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat rabbana la tuzik kulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al wahhab rabbana fuk alayna sabran wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al qawm al kafirin rabbana fuk alayna sabran wa thabbit aqdamana wa tawassana muslimin wa afu anna wa ufiyu lana wa arhamna anta mawlana فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تعول به بيننا وبين معصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر حمنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين وعفو عنا وافتلنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أقم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله